Assalamu alaikum and good morning. Uh, Professor Shaliza, the Associate Vice Chancellor, Research and Innovation, uh, Deans, Deputy Deans of Faculties and Research Clusters, Heads of PPP and PPGP, uh, Heads of and Deputy Heads of the Research Centers, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum and good morning once again. I welcome you all to this uh, morning session on the orientation uh, of research centers. Uh, as you know, research centers are considered to be the powerhouse of research in the university. And here we have very high concentration of very high caliber researcher. And they are expected to do the miracle. They are expected to tackle challenges, research and uh, societal challenges uh, through tech transfer, through knowledge transfer, through exchanges, uh, in addition to creating high level scholarship. And they are expected to produce things which are uh, beyond the sum of individual efforts. So uh, research centers should uh, make two plus two, not four, but more than four. And they do it through synergy among the knowledge that they have in individuals in their research uh, center. And they are also considered to be windows outside uh, to the outside world. Uh, because the knowledge base that they have should be useful to the society and they should make it available in a proactive manner uh, to engage with industry, community and government. And as uh, Prof Nursada, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, always say that uh, the stakeholders should consider UM as preferred partner. And I think this is very much true for the research centers also. Uh, research centers in their own area should be considered by uh, colleagues and stakeholders in in the in Malaysia as well as outside when it comes to working with talents working with uh, partners they should consider our centers as their top priority uh, with that in mind, I think UM has a lot of research centers, about 50, and some of them are uh, under the faculties, some of them are the cluster, and the cluster are those which are supposed to be multidisciplinary in nature. And then there are COR uh, Excellence, uh, Center of Excellence under directly the vice, Deputy Vice Chancellor, and some high COE. The research cluster, of course, the expectation is very high, but these are just one wheel in, in the gearbox and they have to work with other units in UM. And UM, uh, probably you, you know that we are blessed with a, a good infrastructure in terms of research management, uh, but of course there are always uh, uh, room for improvement. And research centers are, are a part of this whole infrastructure and they have to work uh, synchronously and harmoniously with other units. And for that, we need to know each other. We need to have better communication. And this is one effort that we uh, initiated because in the recent past, we have seen that uh, there are many uh, those in the leadership position in current research centers are new and we did not have much uh, link much communication with them in the past. So we would like to establish that and uh, obviously we'll continue with this. So the main purpose of this is to uh, let the research centers know uh, and understand uh, how things work at the central research management level, what are the units available, how they can be of assistance to them. So with that in mind, I hope this uh, particular session will be useful to all of you and uh, let me welcome you once again. And also I take this opportunity to thank uh, Professor Shaliza for being with us here today and also the heads of PPP, PPGP and research cluster coordinators. 
the heads and deputy heads, uh, heads of research centers, deans, deputy deans, and all participants, because you, your participation will make it a success. And finally, I have to uh, thank my colleagues at the research cluster, deans, deputy deans, and the research officers who have been working uh, uh, behind the scene to make this happen. So thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Valerie, your mic is muted. Thank you, sir. Uh, moving right along, it is now my pleasure to invite the distinguished professor, Dr. Shariza Ibrahim, who is the Associate Vice Chancellor, Research and Innovation, for our welcoming remarks. Uh, thank you, Valerie. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and a very good morning. Uh, to the deans and deputy deans of research clusters, head of PPP and PPGP, uh, deans and deputy deans of faculties. I see Prof. Terence as well, that, uh, so I think deans are also here. Uh, also directors and heads and deputy directors of research centres, ladies and gentlemen. I think as some of us might remember, centres of research at high, higher um, education institutions were first established uh, probably about 10 years ago or more than that to support the third thrust of uh, National Higher Education Strategic Plan, which is enhancing research and innovation. And subsequently, the Malaysia Higher Education Blueprint, um, we have shifts 8, 7, 5, 2 and 1 on global prominence, innovation ecosystem, financial sustainability, talent excellence, and holistic entrepreneurial and balanced graduates respectively call for a concerted effort to push research and innovation to a new level uh, that will transform our uh, HEIs you know, or the higher education institutions. And as we know, the Ministry of Higher Education has identified the best of uh, our centers of uh, research at the HEIs to be recognized as higher institution centers of excellence and or the high COE to further propel them uh, towards global uh, prominence. Um, the first evaluation exercise of ICOE was uh, undertaken in 2008, and from 142 applications, six uh, COEs uh, in five public high COEs have met the stringent requirements. Uh, but we should acknowledge that the first ever high COE is actually UMP DAC in UM. And they will, with the approval of the cabinet, the recommendation of uh, Mohe, the approved uh, COEs were formally designated. Uh, to be high COE on 30th October uh, 2009 and the efforts of identifying and acknowledging uh, the achievement of COEs uh, in high, high HEIs and the higher education institutions will encourage them to work towards becoming a global leader in their research niche areas. Thus, high COE is supported and facilitated by uh, Mohe so that they will become the focus um, vehicles that will drive R&D and innovation agenda, particularly in fundamental research as well as to human capital development. At present, UM has more than 50 research centers or CORs, under, both under the clusters as well as under faculties. We have four uh, national high COEs. Um, they are UMPDEC, um, IOES, Photonics or PRC, and then uh, TIDREC. And we have two uh, potential high COEs, uh, SEBA and, um, and NanoCAT, nano uh, known as UMCOE. And we would like to see more of our uh, centers of research uh, progressing towards uh, becoming uh, the next uh, high COE uh, for the country. So we need to have a lot of planning strategies and programs to be put in place um, to facilitate and assist our UM uh, centers of research to achieve the high COE status in the future. As what Prahasi said, we have um, uh, excellent researchers and we do not see why uh, we shouldn't uh, be uh, able to reach uh, the high COE level um, for the other centers as well. So I understand the objective of today's program, as mentioned earlier, is to introduce our research centers to our research centers, the management of research processes in UM, which include the procedures and guidelines that are operated by the various units under ITPP and the PNI portfolio. I'm sure all of you 
um, are aware of these processes, but I think it is good for us to have a session like this uh, just to update you and also to, to, to sometimes make things more clear uh, about who is doing what. So we hope that from this session, participants will be clearer on the roles of the different units or the entities related to research management to enable smoother experience for each of you in getting through all the required processes uh, as you carry out your research activities. So with that, I thank you and thank the organizers uh, for doing this and uh, have a productive session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rosha Lisa, for the welcoming remark. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you have been waiting for. So before we proceed further, please be informed that the session is open for Q&A at the end of every briefing from the respective unit. Our first session this morning, let's give the floor to Mr. Amir Faizuddin Ahmad Fazal for the introduction to Office of Associate Vice Chancellor, Research and Innovation. The session is yours, Jam. Apologies for the delay. Please allow about a minute for us to settle down. Apologies for the delay, ladies and gentlemen. 
So um, we will get back to the slot by Inchi Ame shortly because there are some technical issues in the administrative uh, setting for research cluster account. So however, we will proceed first uh, to Dr. Chai Lai Ching, who is the head of PPP to present the slides first for the session on the introduction to the research center management. Uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Chai, the session is yours. So you may proceed to present the slides first while we rectify the technical error. Yeah, thank you, Valerie. So let me share the slide. Okay, so do you all see the slide? Yes. Yes, yes Mr. Chai. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let me give like you know a very brief um, overview or introduction to the functions of um, PPP and uh, what kind of services or um, supports that we will be able to give to um, all the COR over here and all the researchers. Okay, um, so PPP actually stands for Center for Research Services. So in BM is Pusat Perkhidmatan. Uh, sorry, typo. Perkhidmatan Penyelidikan. Hence um, PPP. So it's one of the center. Um, that sit um, under IPPP. So the administrative um, office, our main office is located um, at level two um, KPPI building. So if there is any need, so after the MCO, after the lockdown, you could actually like, you know, visit to our office, like, you know, um, shall you need uh, more support and help. So this is just a very brief um, um, overview uh, um, or graphical um, representation of the organizational um, structure of um, PPP. So I'm currently the um, head of um, PPP. So under PPP, so we have um, basically, um, I would say that we have four offices. So of course we have the administrative um, office of PPP um, that is um, in charge or actually um, focus on supporting the research promotion activities in UM. For example, um, participation in research export, um, production of um, bulletins, um, milestones, organizing webinars. So those are all um, organized directly under the um, PPP um, office. And the person in charge is um, the research officer, Mr. Chang Li Wei. Um, oftentimes, so you see that there's this um, hebahan or like you know the dissemination of news um, of expo um, or um, webinar so it's all um, done by Mr. Chang so if there is anything that you need to know so you could actually write to Mr. Chang directly. So we have a new office which is uh, research visibility um, the PIC um, will be announced um, soon to all of you. So research visibility unit, of course, uh, will be focusing their activity on increasing research visibility and researcher visibility um, through video production, um, through various platform, media, um, newspapers that we will be able to get. Um, thirdly, so we have the research support unit or we call USP, USP. So the person in charge is actually Mr. Mohammed Saleh Sa'ari. Um, under research support unit, what is being done is that this unit support um, the journals housed within UM. Um, we will push for journals to go on um, um, indexing. So that is um, the job of USP. So if your units or if your COR has actually journals or have planned like, you know, to produce journals, so you could actually reach out to a research support unit that um, Mr. Saleh would be able to give you trainings and coaching on how to do that and how to use the platform, the journal indexing platform. And finally, perhaps one of the main function or major function of PPP is actually to manage um, the centralized um, research infrastructure within UM. So we have two central facility, research facility, which is infra laboratories, as well as um, the laboratory animal center. So for intra labs, uh, infra labs, each of them, uh, we have five science officers that they're in charge of different um, portfolio within the um, research facility. 
Um, for Lab Animal Center, our co coordinator is um, Associate Professor Dr. Ong Kian Chai from Medical um, Faculty. So if there is a need for you to use like, you know, animal model, you could always um, contact Lab Animal Center. So just to give you um, a little bit more detail about the core function of PPP. So basically we could categorize like, you know, our core function into two. Like, you know, you see that we have four offices, so we could group it into generally into two. So the first core function is, of course, like, you know, to promote research excellence and visibility. So this is actually supported by um, the, administrat uh, the administrative office of PPP, research visibility unit and also USP. So under the core function of promoting research excellence and visibility, we coordinate, support and organize research promotional activities. For example, um, webinars, the UMR webinars, talks, forums, um, all the research expo like MTE, like Pachita and so on and so forth. Uh, we produce UM research bulletin, milestones, um, research videos. We provide and maintain platforms and channels to enhance research communication and visibility. Um, we manage and also provide professional editorial advice and support to ensure the quality of peer review and index um, research journal of UM that's directly under USP. Second, so our core function is to provide and manage research facility to actually support research activity in UM. So this is done majorly by infra laboratories and lab animal center. Um, under the research um, facility management, we provide research services um, to support and promote quality research. So um, under infra laboratory, so we house a lot of research equipment that's actually open to all the internal researchers. We manage and ensure smooth operation and central research facilities to support and enhance research activities in UM. We also provide training for high-end research equipment to researchers and students um, to support research. For example, um, GCMS, HPLC, NMR, so if there is a need um, for any researchers like you know, to actually learn uh, how to use it, so you could always approach um, PPP. So we would be able to arrange, like you know, and probably sort of like you know, internship session or training session um, for the students and researchers. So finally, so we manage and coordinate also implementation of laboratory quality management accreditation system ISO seventeen. 025 um, right now. So under the promotion, research promotion, so these are some of the activities that um, we have been organizing um, and will continue this activity. So perhaps um, some of you have joined our UMR webinar series. So the objective is actually to provide information, knowledge, the current skills on research enhancement and for academic career development. We also would like to expose like, you know, researchers to more emerging topics, the trend, um, the opportunities like, you know, um, in, in research in Malaysia, um, as well as like, you know, to encourage, motivate um, and provide um, more inspirational um, series like, you know, to researchers to continually um, progress in their research. So these are some of the example of webinar series that has been organized, like you know, um, by Prof Ng, by Dato Asma, to talk on different topics. Uh, we support research expo, so we call, we select, and we support UM researchers to participate in research expo, research exhibition, competition for research promotion. Um, the research expo supported by UM include MTE, um, ITEX, and Pachipta. Um, so far, uh, when I mention support over here, it means like you know financially, financially supported. So UM will pay for the researchers who has been selected to participate in this expo. Of course, there are a lot of expo out there. We also support um, registration and and provide all the technical um, support, like you know, for those um, exhibition. Perhaps like you know, UM has not identified like you know to support financially but PPP do provide um, technical support so you could reach out um, to us as well. Um, we produce UM research bulletin so this is the latest the most latest um, research um, bulletin volume 21. Um, for those who are interested to have a read so you could actually scan the QR code over here to go to the ebook. 
Um, it is produced um, biannually, so two volumes, uh, two issues, sorry, two issues um, per year. So one will come out in June, July, another one will come in December, January. Um, the main aim for this bulletin, of course, is to serve as a media or platform to share research findings by UM researchers, to spotlight um, and increase visibility of UM researchers, and as well as to promote research services by UM. So if you go into this issue, you will notice that we actually inserted quite a number of advertisement um, from research um, center. So on the type of services provided or on the work that they do and um, they would like to increase their visibility. So we do support that in our bulletin over here. Um, the target audience include UM researchers, students, external stakeholders, um, industry partners. So we actually send this to the industry partner and also public. It will be housed on UMR um, website, our Facebook and as well as the Science Media Centre Malaysia whereby a lot of the uh, um, readers are, or followers are actually the media um, from Malaysia. So the content, so you could read over here, so it's quite um, a lot of content being covered. We have editorial, we have cover story. So the, what you see over here is the cover story of Bule, UM Project um, Bule. We have features article, research highlights that we open for researchers to actually contribute articles. Uh, we do the copy editing, we have commentary and also um, sponsored article advertisement, advertisement um, from the industry. Uh, we have Milestone. Milestone uh, is being published four issues per year. So the content including all the news, um, current news on research awards, recognition in, in UM, research events um, and so on and so forth. So for both Bulletin and Milestone, um, the person in charge is Mr. Chang. So shall you need more information? So you could always email uh, Mr. Chang or you could email myself like, you know, to get more information about it. Um, we have two social media platforms at the moment. So one is the Facebook and another one is LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is newly registered and open. So I would invite all the COR to actually follow and like um, our Facebook and um, LinkedIn. So we will share all the information, news, bulletins, uh, visibility articles, videos on these social media platforms. Um, USP. So the main function of USP is actually for journal management for selected UM um, journals. So we provide consultation to journal editors to enhance quality and also prestige of the um, publication. Um, we have two journals um, in, uh, in UM that are um, that are actually are indexed in WOS. Um, we provide also comprehensive open journal system training to all the journal editors. Um, Mr. Saleh is the PIC, so this is the phone number as well as the email that you could actually reach out to Mr. Saleh. So this is just an overview, a very brief one on um, all the journals hosted by UM and the status of each of the journals. So far we have 84 journals um, that are actually hosted by UM. So for central research facility, a very fast one. So under central research facilities, um, we have um, four, I would say that we have four labs over here. The infra analytical labs um, that is situated or located within KPPI building and also IPS building. So in infra analytical labs, you'll be able to find um, all the chemi um, chemical um, equipment, chromatography and um, GCMS, and so on and so forth, physical um, um, equipment analysis and so on and so forth, microscopy imaging like FISAM, biological and molecular equipments such as DNA sequencer, PCR, real-time PCR and also microbiology lab. Um, infra HII is located at HIR building um, whereby it housed a lot more equipments over there, including chemical, microscopy imaging, biological, most uh, majority of the equipment are actually the biological and molecular equipments, including NGS platforms. Um, infra microbiology is located in KPPI building on level three. So it houses um, BSL2 level um, um, laboratory. So you could get PCR, real time PCR, um, BSL, uh, the biosafety cabinet too, and so on and so forth. And finally, we have the lab animal center, um, whereby 
we have animal cages and shelter to house like you know the lab animal um, and also post-mortem tables. So this is the infra laboratory. So we have almost um, we have 136 units of major research equipment and 130 supportive basic equipments. Um, we have 16 lab staffs um, that manage and handle all of these um, close to 260 pieces of equipment within our care, our, our management, so within PPP's management. So as you can see in um, the photo over here, we have like, you know, NMR, we have GC. Um, for more detail, I do not have enough time to go to all the equipments that they have, but you would be able to get like, you know, the list or the database of all the equipments that are housed under infra facilities, as well as the equipments that you could find within UM. So in the website, httpinfra.um.edu.mine. Um, if you have inquiry or you need more support, so you could always call in or you could um, email um, to labinfra at um.edu.mine. So this is um, the lab animal center. So this is the facility and um, the monkey um, being kept um, under our lab animal center. So the coordinator is Associate Professor Dr. Ong Kian Chai. Um, these are the numbers that you could call to um, LAC um, and the email address that you could reach out to them, shall you need um, um, more support on that. Currently for all the infra, uh, for the central uh, research facility, uh, we have add on a new scope because we always get inquiry um, on whether if like, you know, we would be able to provide like, you know, A to Z, like it means that they would send sample in. We'll do all the sample preparation, um, processing, um, measuring using GC or, uh, or LCMS or NMR and analyze the data and give them a report. So these inquiry usually come from the industry or also come from like, you know, um, some individual researchers or research groups. Um, that do not have the expertise to do such analysis, but they will need that data to support um, a, a major part of the research project that they have obtained. Um, therefore, we actually um, set up this um, new scope, which is to provide research and analytical services to industry, institution, hospital, government agencies and um, individual. Uh, we are working together with also some of the COR right now, so I know that um, um, some of the COR is discussing with Mr. Didi um, on this type of services. So some of the example of project would be a long term annual project um, from the government or from COR um, on type of analysis such as like, you know, antibiotic residue in agricultural product, heavy metal, um, pathogen water and so on and so forth. Um, it could be a project based um, research services also um, that you need like, you know, certain type of um, um, analysis being done, so that could be arranged also. Uh, we also provide research and very specific analytic um, training programs for the industry and COR and all the external uh, stakeholders, including students. Um, the industry project manager is actually Mr. Didi Awandi, so you could email to Mr. Didi if you um, need to know um, the scope and also probably the costing or the model, how it works. Um, we manage the ISO 17025 laboratory accreditation. Currently, we have eight laboratories in UM that are um, that have the status of ISO 17025. So, if you are interested to have your lab um, to be accredited to or to have your service accredited, so you could reach out to Mr. Amiru Fatin. Um, this is his um, email address. So he, he will be the person in charge for laboratory quality management. And basically, Mr. Amir will take care of all the quality management of all the equipments within infra laboratories. So with that, so I end my sharing over here. If you have any question, I'll be happy to take it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Chai, for the uh, session. So we would like to open uh, the session for question and answer for PPP. Uh, hello. Hi. Good morning, Dr. Chai. Uh, this is uh, Shazri from, from Engineering from uh, Research. 
I just want to ask about the laboratory. You mentioned yes. that we, are, we have the accreditation of ISO, ISO 170.25. Yes. Uh, OK, so uh, do we have any experience uh, with CIRIM? Uh, any 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 experience with serum in terms of certification and so on? For ISO 17025, do do you mean specifically ISO 1725? Mm, because because based yes. on my uh, based on my information with serum, because they want in order for us to apply for a certification, uh, they require us to have a certif or a accredited laboratory. Uh, yes. In UM or in any any facilities or in any manufacturing facilities. So do we have any experience uh, with CIRIM in that process? Yes, yes, we do. So um, in fact, Inchek Amiru is actually being trained like, you know, to handle all of this. So if you need to actually set up like, you know, um, yours, like, you know, in engineering um, on the processes, how to set up, like, you know, the teams required um, for the certification process, uh, we will be able to support you. Uh, and then uh, my second question is about the um, uh, journals and uh, editorial services. So mm -hmm. uh, does PPP provided any uh, proofreading services or any uh, accredited proofreading services uh, to the to the researchers? No, at the moment we do not provide these um, proofreading um, services. Yeah, we only provide like you know training for the editors, like you know to manage um, journals for um, uh, indexing. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. Hi, uh, sorry, uh, I'm Aini from Law. Just to confirm uh, about what you were saying about uh, journals uh, being indexed, uh, you would be providing training to the editors, yeah? So, uh, so we are talking about how you will be teaching the editors how to uh, fulfill the requirements to this uh, Scopus Index, WOS Index, is it? Yes, so we will be providing tra training to the editors, like you know, on how to use the open um, journal systems of UM, as well as like you know, um, editorial support um, and also training on how to manage and how to push it for indexing. Okay, uh, so how do we get in touch uh, to get this training? Uh, you could write to um, Injek Saleh. Um, for to arrange for a training or a little bit of briefing on the model. Or you could like, you know, write to me and I would be able to link you to um, Injek Sali. All right, that thank you so much. It. Okay, welcome. Hi, Dr. Chai. I'm Jennifer from Oral Cancer Research and Coordinating Center. Um, I've got a question about UM Research Bulletin. Uh, can you share what is the process of or how do you all select articles or contributions? What's the process like to be um, uh, featured in the bulletin? OK, uh, we actually have an editorial board um, that um, before, I mean, way before, like, you know, the publication date, so we'll meet to decide the team of the bulletin for the next issue and we will decide like you know what type of topics like you know to get in so we will get probably advice from cluster also to search for like you know research projects and researchers that we would like to feature or worthwhile um, or there's a, there, there's a story that we will be able to cover to feature um, within the bulletin there are many sections or segments within the bulletin um, for cover story we basically uh, would um, select so that it, it fit with the theme um, that we go for um, there are um, interview sessions so interview session the the, the topic so we would also it will also be decided by the editorial board debate and decided by the editorial board and after that um, we will select um, um, from the UM expert like you know researchers that we would be able to interview on the topics that um, we have to determine um, featured article as well, so it will be um, debated and decided by the editorial board. But we do have, like you know, um, a segments like you know of ten articles that actually we open up to researchers, um, UM researchers to to submit to us, like you know, any articles that they think they would like to um, highlight and and being published in um, research bulletin um, as well as commentary. But 
having said that, we always like you know open up for COR to approach us the type of projects that um, you have done or you would like to highlight and you think um, probably it would be suitable um, to be on the our our research bulletin. So we are happy to listen and to consider um, the project um, to be put on probably either a cover story or like you know the other segments like um, the featured um, article. Uh, we have another approach also that you would be able to go for like you know if you think that there's certain um, projects that you've done or a uh, type of collaborations that you've done you would like to share it out like you know through our bulletin you could always uh, we could always slot you into the um, advertisement um, um, segment or like you know a special segment like you know um, just um, put up for COR so that we have some flexibility within the um, our our bulletin over here. Um, just regarding the themes that you mentioned, are they mm -hmm. shared with everyone, all the researchers in the UN, so that we can then uh, decide what sort of projects we can share according to the theme? Yeah, because every year we will have only um, two issues, like you know. So for um, this coming um, issue, that will be published in December, January. Um, the theme will be on AI, on um, big data analysis. Um, we will we will actually share, like you know, the theme and announce to everyone when we open up to call for articles um, for the highlights, uh, research highlights um, segment. And this is normally through the email, is it? This is normally through the email. Yeah. We will also put it up in Facebook, actually. The call will be in the social media, too. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Chai, for yeah, the you. session this morning. But should you have any further question with regards to PPP, you may email Dr. Chai directly or contact any person in charge under the unit. So now moving on to our next session, let's uh, welcome back Mr. Amir Faizuddin Ahmad Fazal, who will be representing and sharing with us on the introduction to office to will be sharing on the introduction to office of Associate Vice Chancellor, Research and Innovation. Welcome, Shami. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and selamat sejahtera uh, to to all the to associate professor probably uh, to uh, a bit nervous sorry uh, to pro, professor Dr Sharisa Ibrahim uh, associate uh, associate vice chancellor of uh, research and uh, innovation to all the dean's clusters, to all the head of union, and to all the members here. So again, I'm so sorry about the technical issue just now. So I would like to share about the main and role functions uh, under our office. <clears throat> Allow me to present. Yeah, I mean. 
Puan Valerie, saya masih tak boleh nak present slide. Um, um, while Encik Amir rectify on the technical issue on his side, um, we would like to invite Encik Muhammad Fridaw Zainal Abidin for the session. Boleh nampak tak? Boleh, boleh. Okay, so sorry. <coughs> so basically, okay, this is under the deputy, uh, under the Assistant Vice Chancellor Research and Innovation, under the IPPP. It consists of uh, four office, under four units, which is General Office of uh, Assistant Vice Chancellor. And then we have research cluster, we have center of grant risk management, PPGP, and then we have center of research services, PPP, and also under the overview of uh, Prof. Shaliza is under uh, data intensive computing center, DICC. So this is the main uh, units under IPPP lah. And then so the services, the services provided by the IPPP, basically uh, we provide as a one-stop center for all research activity, and then uh, we also promote the university research. This one is under basically uh, what Dr. Chai said before, and then the monitor research activity is basically under the PPGP, and assessment of university research performance, you know, basically under our office, and include all the four pillars. Of and also uh, for, <clears throat> and this is the main services provided by the IPPP. And then, um, okay, under the IPPP, again, uh, as I showed in the structures before, so we have uh, our main office, PPGP, PPP, Research Cluster Office, and also Data Intensive Computing Center. So we go to our main office, um, uh, under the Institute of Vice Chancellor Research and Innovation. So, of course, we did by Professor Dr. Shariza Ibrahim. Uh, and then uh, PPGP will lead under Mr. Muhammad Fridas bin Zainal Abin. After this, he will present you guys about the PPGP. And then for uh, under PPP, involved Dr. Chai, uh, lead by Dr. Chai Lai Ching. Just now, she's present about the PPP. And currently, uh, as I think coordinator under research cluster office, Professor Dr. Saiful Anwar. And then the ICC lead by the head of the ICC, uh, Dr. Liu Chi San, and uh, he's from FSKTM. <coughs> okay, so this is the main role. Our main objective today is the role of the office of SSC Vice Chancellor. So basically, we involve into five, um, I think, sub area, five areas of clusters. First, uh, our main function is management of IPPP, including human resource and building methods. So human resource here, we involve with the appointment, extensions of new contract staff. And then all basi and basically, we are here as the mini HR under uh, human resource. So we do all the KPI, e-service, leave, uh, any regard, any uh, regarding, uh, any matters regarding to HR. Basically, the, uh, the staff or any officers will come uh, to our office to, to discuss and to find the best solution. And, and the second one is the building matters. So under these administrations, uh, under the management is building matters. As you know, I triple we are uh, taking care of uh, KPPI, our main building, and also we are taking care of ITS building, uh, in, uh, in, uh, ITS only for Block A, Block B, and Block C, and also now we are taking care of HIR building. So these three main building under the, under the facilities, the management, the maintenance, we're, uh, we're, 
will be handled by us. <clears throat> and the second pillar is a research financial management. So this research financial uh, financial management, uh, we we are the one who uh, manage all the account and all the financial uh, financial regarding uh, pertaining to the research. Uh, concept, uh, basically, we do uh, the main here is to consolidate research grind, uh, and then uh, all the improperly hand, and then and also um, for payroll for under RE and GRE. And in the third pillars under management of research strategy and plans, uh, this this uh, this unit uh, basically. Uh, are the one the units that taking care of all the research strategies. Um, for example, uh, we we are the we are we are the one uh, who come up with the guidelines. And then, if any uh, guidelines, for example, for the RE GRE, any guidelines come from the KPT, we come into us and we look on that, and we will discuss and and we will try to uh, to inform to all of. Uh, uh, or the research office. And then the third one is re, uh, the, the fourth one is research data management. Research data management, um, basically, this unit handle all the data for Myra and also for the Mohe and any data that request from the PTG uh, regarding research, RE, GRE, and uh, yeah, any, 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 any regarding the, about the research. And the last one we do are the recruitment of postdoc research assistant and graduate research assistant. So this one, um, this is the main unit that appoint or offer the RE and GRE. So basically this is the person, uh, research management policy uh, under the office uh, of assistant vice minister, we have research management policy and strategy unit under Dr. Tan Siawi. Me uh, doing the maintenance and the facilities, administrations, Madam Fatia, and then the research data management units under Prof. Dr. Zubaida, and financial management unit under Ms. No Suzila Muhammad. Uh, so basically, if you need more information about RTPP, you can directly go to the link at the website. I think that's all from um, main office. So any question? Uh, Assalamualaikum, Encik Amir. Uh, Sazril from Water Engineering uh, Research. Nak tanya okay. mengenai postdoctoral okay. and uh, GRA punya recruitment. So uh, I was informed for the postdoctoral, uh, UM researchers are entitled to get uh, uh, one postdoctoral researchers, uh, kalau dapat grant more than I don't know I don't know what is the amount, what is the threshold at the moment, but is that is that true? Is that is that uh is that statement true? Because I heard it from my senior, and I'm not sure whether it's still uh valid uh at the moment. Um, I'm Mr. Shazri, uh, for this question, uh, um, saya tak berapa berani nak jawab. Bukan tak berapa ini, saya tak berapa pasti the, the, the right answers because as for now, uh, kita based on iklan then of course they have the criteria, yes they have a certain amount of grind and then when they open the, the, the iklan uh, the advertisements uh, for postdoc yeah, we, we can, um, most of the literature can apply but based on the criteria involved sebab saya rasa isu on the any researcher tu Benda tu, criteria tu, it depends on criteria yang ditetapkan ketika itu. Alright. So, because I was informed, for example, if I got an external grant more than uh, 200k, yes, uh, yes. 200k, then I'm entitled to get one postdoc punya uh, researcher from and supported by the by the UM, by the university. I was informed but, like that lah last time. Uh. 
Yeah, last yeah. time we have maybe that be the time we have amount of money, but yeah. I think now with this really uh my in terms of money, kita tak tak berapa kukuh saya rasa. Okay. So basically when when they have a put on money, they they will open their advertisement, they will they will just set up the criteria, then yes, you can apply for it. Actually. And I will get back to you to to get okay. the uh, the specific answers. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Assalamualaikum, Encik Amir. Ya, Waalaikumsalam. Ah, saya Hafiz dari CPE. Ya, Encik Hafiz. Ah, nak tanya berkenaan dengan um, kalau saya kami dari centre dapat lab tapi lab tu tak ada internet. Ah, so, um, saya dah hantar surat lah tapi saya tak sure sama ada channel yang saya hantar tu betul ke tak ke IPP. Kalau macam nak apply internet tu actually nak um, communicate dengan siapa eh? You can communicate with me uh, sebab saya rasa internet tu is regarding to dia punya port internet eh? Ah, internet punya connection langsung tak ada dekat yeah. makmal, dekat bangunan IES tu. Bangunan makmal baru dan yang you baru dapat kan? Ah, betul. So uh, I think you can uh, email, email back to me. Saya ah. kira, because we need to bring paper kepada JKICT kalau ah. nak pasang port. Okay, saya akan email lagi sekali lah. Alright, thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay. Assalamualaikum Cik Amir. Waalaikumsalam Prof. Uh, saya Prof Wan Halisa ni, apa khabar? Khabar baik Prof. Sihat eh? Sihat. <laughs> Nampak sihat eh? <laughs> Cik Amir, <coughs> saya ada satu soalan berkaitan dengan <coughs> data management. Okay. Uh, Cik Amir ada sebut uh, tadi kan, ada hmm. satu section yang mengendalikan data untuk <coughs> UM lah, betul eh? Uh, okay. Jadi uh, data management ni merangkumi uh, data untuk Myra dan sebagainya lah kan? Betul Prof. Uh, okay. Jadi dia uh, mengandungi semua data untuk UM, betul tak? Secara untuk research lah, bagian research ya. Uh, uh. Research, betul, uh, tak, uh, postgraduate student semua ada lah. Betul lah. Like, yang yeah, postgraduate ni basically involve uh, with the GRE punya uh, area lah. Basically hmm. yes, kalau untuk Myra, uh, ada section yang berkaitan dengan postgraduate, yes, we are the one yang compile the data. Hmm. Jadi maksudnya uh, berkaitan dengan grant pun uh, ada di sini lah? Ada Prof. Uh, okay. Jadi saya, saya punya uh, soalan adalah um, uh, di di peringkat fakulti, dia orang pun ada uh, keperluan untuk data-data uh, ni uh, untuk melihat KPI fakulti. Okey. Jadi boleh ke uh, fakulti communicate dengan uh, apa ni pusat di sini IPPP lah kan untuk dapatkan data-data ini. Boleh bro. Uh, hmm. Tadi uh, setakat ni memang kami provide juga memang yang actively uh, request basically hmm. from perubatan, perdikian and engineering. Hmm. They are actively asking uh, always uh, ask us about the, uh, to provide the data that we hmm. always Uh, helping them lah untuk provide data. Cuma kalau boleh bagi tu uh, ample time lah. Dia macam mm -hmm. some 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 PTJ request hari Jumaat nak hari uh, request hari Kamis nak hari Jumaat. Because mm -hmm. we need the masses to data and we, we, of course we want to provide the clear data to the faculty lah. Boleh Prof mm -hmm. tak ada masalah. Boleh ya tak ada masalah. Sebab uh, saya nampak uh, dari, dari sudut pandang uh, efficiency lah kecekapan uh, untuk apa memperolehi data ni. Uh, sebab saya dapati uh, setengah fakulti dia uh, ingin memperoleh data ni dan dia peroleh data ni dengan cara apa ni email kepada pensyarah untuk memperoleh data-data ni sedangkan data-data ni sebenarnya dah ada di, di peringkat pusat kan jadi bila uh, cara kerja yang seperti itu jadi maksudnya untuk memperoleh data yang yang bersih dan juga orang kata apa tepat tu uh, akan mengambil masa dan juga mungkin ada yang tak respons kan disebabkan kesibukan individu kan mungkin tak respon jadi data di peringkat yang mereka nak dapat tu mungkin tak 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 tepatlah kan sebab ada yang tak respon dan sebagainya jadi sebab itulah saya tanya Cik Amir ni maksudnya cara yang lebih baik adalah uh, uh, apa ni mereka communicate dengan pusat yang dah telah sedia ada data ni kan jadi tak perlulah communicate dengan semua Uh, pensyarah melalui email untuk mendapatkan apa uh, informasi berkaitan dengan grant-grant dan sebagainya. Uh, adakah kenyataan saya ini betul? 
Encik Amin? Uh, basically boleh prof tak ada masalah uh, Cuma kalau benda-benda yang ber, uh, contohnya Especially penerbitan ataupun uh, grant-grant yang tidak di-register melalui LGMS Tidak dimaklumkan dalam sistem research Benda tu uh, kita tak dapat capture <coughs> Kalau ada itu, itu adalah input menu yang perlu dimasukkan oleh PTG sendirilah untuk KPI <coughs> Tapi secara prinsipnya semua data tu memang kami boleh sediakan Tapi give us the ample time for us to provide uh, the data Okey, sebab saya rasa Okey, sebab saya rasa cara memperoleh data melalui email ni sepatutnya kita tak buat lagi dah. Kita dah sampai tahap IR 4.0. Jadi sepatutnya uh, cara yang macam ni sepatutnya uh, tak dilaksanakan dah lah bagi pandangan saya lah. Kalau dah ada uh, center data data management sepatutnya semua orang peroleh data daripada situ. Okey, terima kasih. Saya nak tanya satu soalan ringkas saja, Kiam eh. Ya. Yeah. Saya dari Center of Quran Research, pusat penyelidikan Quran, Sim Melayu. Uh, yeah. Berkait dengan data yang Prof Wan sebut juga tadi. Uh, mudah saja soalan. Uh, bila kita terima grant dan kita buat penyelidikan, ada publication. Um, bila cluster minta report, dia kata just report berkenaan publication yang uh, affiliate dengan center. Jadi <coughs> uh, itu satu. Bila di jabatan, jabatan juga minta yang 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 apa yang yang apa yang affiliate dengan jabatan. Jadi <coughs> artinya kita perlu dua bahan publication untuk kita consider sebagai researcher. Jadi dalam hal ini macam mana nak selesai? Saya seorang tapi saya dah publish bawah center. Uh, jadi saya nak kena publish pula bawah jabatan supaya KPI saya lepas. Terima kasih. Uh, kita dengan perkara ini, Datuk, saya akan semak semula kalau uh, maybe, maybe kalau okay. saya... Ya, yeah, Prof. Uh, Cik Amin Jas, uh, nak, uh, mungkin boleh bagi pendapat sikit macam lah regarding that, uh, Datuk. Uh, Datuk, uh, berkara-perkara ini, biasanya kalau untuk uh, affiliation tu. Mm -hmm. uh, untuk dikira sebagai output daripada center memang kita minta ada affiliation center lah dalam mm. dia punya apa nama tu dalam penerbitan tersebut okay. tapi kami, saya juga faham lah memang uh, perlu ada affiliation dengan fakulti juga kalau tak tak yeah. dikira lah sebagai yeah. fakulti jadi biasanya Betul. yang uh, dilakukan adalah mm. uh, ada dual affiliation lah dalam publication tu ada menyatakan affiliation author tu kalau dia daripada fakulti, ada affiliation fakulti dan kalau dia ada pada center, ada juga affiliation center. So, double affiliation lah. Oh, tak salah ya? Eh? Tak, tak salah. Tak ada masalah. Sebab memang betul pun dua-dua tu sebab dia memang ahli center yeah. dan dia juga memang daripada fakulti. Tapi oh. kalau macam dia high COE tu, ah, tu saya tak berapa clear. Tapi saya sebut pun tak ada masalah lah juga. Saya, saya sebut tak ada masalah juga. Sama saya, saya tak sampai high COE lagi. Ah, tak apa, tak apa. Tak, apa. <laughs> <laughs> tak just contoh lah. Tapi saya rasa yeah. tak ada masalah lah. Memang itu yang uh, dipraktiskan oleh uh, hmm. semua center lah setakat yang saya faham lah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Clear. Okay, Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Okay. Okay. Any question? I think uh, maybe that's all from me and thank you so much uh, to the clusters for allowing me to join this uh, orientation. So, ada sebarang masalah pertanyaan, actually uh, everyone can directly contact us. InsyaAllah, we will try to facilitate all the research and all the lectures about the research. Thank you so much. Very good the session Amin. So moving on to our next session, I would like to call upon Mr. Muhammad Ridho Zainal Abidin to share with us on the introduction to Pusat Pengurusan Geran Penyelidikan PTGP. The session is yours, Encik Muhammad Ridho.
uh, for organizing the uh, discussion. <clears throat> okay, I will brief about uh, the introduction to the center of research and management. Uh, Uh, so we well, I can uh, begin, uh, well. Why? Uh? Not able to share the slide. My button for presentation is disabled. By using your MSA to subscribe account because uh, MS Teams VM only allow presenter to share the slides if you log in using the M to subscribe account. Ladies and gentlemen, apologies for the glitch again. So please give us a minute in order for us to check on this technical issue. Thank you very much for your patience. <clears throat> okay, uh, well, can you see the front page? Yes. Okay, thank you, thank you and apologize for the uh, well, okay. So, I okay, assalamualaikum and good morning, everyone. Okay, uh, I am more fit out than I begin, uh, acting head for for the center of research and management. Okay, I will give a brief, uh, brief information about uh, about the management of research grant in uh, UN. Okay, so actually, uh, I'm from PPGP, which is uh, under the management of research and innovation, which is led by Prof. 
Echo dot Anoka Ada Abu Rahman. And then I work under Echo Shay Vice Chancellor Research and Innovation, which is Prof. Shadiga Ibrahim. And then under the management of IEPOP, so that is PPGP, uh, which manage managing the uh, research grant uh, B award and O award processes in UM. <clears throat> okay, so uh, this is the uh, structure chart for uh, the PPGP, uh, which uh, we are under the IEPOP, uh, Prof. Shaliga Ibrahim. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, uh, this is the uh, structure, organizational structure for BPGP, uh, which we have a uh, pre award team on the left side and then a uh, post award team on the, on the right side and also administration. administration. Okay, under the pre award team, we have a uh, pre officers in charge, which is kind of agua. Uh, she manages the uh, international grant, private grant, and research grant. Uh, basically, the research grant uh, which involves uh, uh, industry and uh, international uh, initiatives uh, will be managed by Agura. And then uh, we have uh, Chet No Atika Mohamed No P. She is the person in charge for government agency grant, multi grant, and the last one we have uh one Suhada. She is the uh person in charge for uh big award. Uh, Krauss, uh, I think your yeah. slides are, are not right. I think your slides are not moving. Are you showing this the right deck? Okay, uh, is it moving, Ralph? No. What we are, I'm seeing a sub-cluster with all the different areas and the year and numbers. I'm not seeing the structure slides. Okay. Kalau you buat slide show, dia tak akan move. Wait. Maybe Fridos can share this slide with organizers, so organizers yang akan jaga slide tu. Okay, well, uh, and I can do you well? Uh, yes, you can send to us. Maybe while we wait, can we have any general discussion, any specific topics or whatever uh, questions uh, pertaining to what has been presented just now that anyone would like to discuss rather than having, you know, dead air? Anyone? Yes, uh, Prof. Sajid, yes, Prof. Edmund, yes, go ahead. Yeah. I parents, one, yes. Thank you. I yeah. have one question uh, I want to pose. Because this is a problem I'm having also with the uh, North South Center, which is under uh, which I'm working with. The question is this: right. Can an academic have a dual affiliation? By that I mean he is a member of a particular faculty, but also 
is uh, a member of a research center. Uh, that will, I'm just toying with this idea to see how we can help strengthen the centers by giving them uh, permanent staff. That means the staff will be, in fact, permanent at the research centers. Right, but can, right. I, but can do yeah. teaching, can do their teaching at the faculties. Is there any such plans or thinking at the moment in the cluster? Uh, sure. Uh, for internally, I think uh, that should not be too much of a problem, uh, Prof. Terence, but I think the issue would come about if that particular centre is going to go up into the MCOE and also eventually high COE, uh, because there is a requirement by the ministry that you have to have a certain number of permanent researchers within your centres. So as a centre itself is just within the university, I, I think that won't be an issue but if you're going for high coe then it will be an issue because you have to show that you have a, a, a specific numbers of researchers or permanent members of the center but that i think is a bit complicated i, I, I we have to discuss this with uh, the, the higher ups to see if there is a possible solution or technicality for that uh, appearance yeah I'm sorry, it can yes. be much more help than that, but yeah, <laughs> that's what no, I can think you. of. I just wanted to know what the thinking is on yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They are okay. ideas we're toying with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, I think Encik uh, Fridaus uh, has uh, sorted out the issue, so go ahead, Encik uh, Fridaus, thanks. <coughs> okay, uh, thank you, uh, oh, hi, Paul. Okay, uh, basically this is the uh, structure of uh, research and innovation. I, I believe uh, the GMA has began at it before. So this, uh, actually PPGP uh, was under the management of uh, IEPP, uh, uh, which is led by uh, Professor Dr. Shadiga Ibrahim. Okay. <clears throat> So this is also the structure, the main structure of IEPP, uh, which we have research clusters and then EPGP and EPP. <coughs> okay, uh, this is structure of uh, EPGP, where we have uh, actually uh, uh, two, two teams uh, for the research grant management, which one is a uh, pre award team and the right, right, the right, is, right one is a uh, post award team. So far, we have a uh, six officers, officers in charge for the uh, each type, uh, each type of category of research grant, which is uh, we have one Agura, she managed the post award processes for. Uh, international and private grant, uh, private grant uh, application, and then we have uh, Che Atika uh, managing the uh, application for the government agency at Mohni and Mohi research grant, and while um while for the internal grant, we have uh one Kuhada uh, L1. Actually, actually, Oswada also uh, assists in the uh, application for research grant uh, under Mohi and Mohi. Okay, on the right side, we have a uh, post award, <coughs> uh, the post award research, uh, the manage, managing of post award research grant. So we have one No Bahia, no Bahia which we, uh, which she managed the uh, post award professor about the international and private grant, uh, including government agency, MOHI, and other MOHI grant. Uh, we also have one Alia Diana. Uh, she managed the uh, MOHI grant uh, for the XRGS grant and then uh, BAP research grant and RU grant. So the last officer is uh, one Norida, which she managed the uh, uh, award professor for uh, Gram in FRUE, uh, IIRG, UMRG, 
and uh, Grand Chinese now, which is the remaining of uh, our frequent. <clears throat> On top of that, uh, we have two uh, staff uh, in charge for the administration, administration which is uh, one Bahia, uh, sorry, one Abaya and uh, one, one, uh, uh, support in staff. <clears throat> Okay, uh, basically, this is a basically, vegan is a sum of money which which include uh, uh, some fund of some amount of money to uh, to undertake your, to undertake your research in general. Uh, we manage uh, in BPGP, we manage the salary and wages, traveling and transportation, rental, maintenance materials, maintenance, and so on. All the expenses under the program uh, will be managed by BPGP. On top of that, some of the uh, some of the uh, external fund they have overhead costs and direct costs. Okay, so this is the category of research grant where we have UM in an grant using our you using either using UM fund or our fund and so on. So and then we have external grant. So for the external grant we have um funding from Mohi, Mohi, uh, other government agencies, private sector or industry, uh, and the last one is uh, international. <clears throat> Basically, this is the role of PGP in managing the research grant. Uh, looking in <clears throat> looking into pre award processes, uh, um, we uh, we develop the internal research grant program funded by UM and external collaborators. Uh. So, uh, on top of that, we also identify the funding or the, the funding of research grant opportunities and the potential applicant. So that we will uh we will approach the the researchers in, in the certain area uh to apply for that particular research grant. So uh we also announce the opening or the calling for the research grant and we assist uh, in the proposal development in terms of budget, um, uh, MOA, uh, and pricing. <clears throat> we also coordinate the proposal peer review by the panelists before we submit the final proposal to the funder. Uh, for your information, I uh, started from 2021, all the grant, all the research grant application, either to government or industry or uh, international, uh, we will uh, conduct a peer review before we before we submit uh, we submit the proposal to the funder. <clears throat> okay, so uh, upon upon the approval of the research grant, uh, sometimes we will negotiate with the with the funder about the about the OTPAIR agreement, about the <coughs> uh, pricing and uh, timeline. Okay. <coughs> uh, the last step uh, for the pre award processes is uh, we create the research grant account in RGMS and then we communicate with uh, IMP finance team because now we maintain two systems uh, in grant management. One is RGMS and another one is uh, uh, SAP. This system uh, has been integrated for certain, certain functions. Nah. Okay, so that is about the pre award processes. And then when you and then when you go to the post award, the I start to find the research grant, start your project, and then. We monitoring the procurement activities under uh, under each research grant, uh, except for consumables. Actually, for consumables, only two items will come to PPGP, which one is IT accessories and another one is uh, furniture. Okay. <clears throat> so we will protect the expenses 
uh, versus the our original proposal or the revised proposal which has been approved by the funder. So we also manage the environment or budget allocation for Asia lah, this year because not all we can join uh, approve uh, in one in one land budget or in in the full amount of time, time they will disperse based on the progress. <clears throat> okay, uh, we also liaise with Berkshire office uh, pertaining to the research grant expenses matters. Lah. Actually, we we will try to negotiate with the highway and we we make them understand the nature of research nature of research uh, before uh, and so so it will help our PI to to ease the uh, process the procurement process at uh Bendahari stage. <clears throat> okay we um, we also monitor the the uh, progress of the research project uh, under the BPGP, uh, which we also prepare the okay for in, for external grant such as uh, private and international, uh, they need us to provide to provide the invoice for each uh, disbursement before they release the 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 funding to BPGP. Um, on top of that, uh, we also monitor the progress and final report for the project. We uh, we monitor the output for each uh, for each project, such as human development, public action, intellectual property, and research activities. <clears throat> um, we also uh, consider and support the application for the extension of research, which uh, we will write to, to the funder uh, for the extension of the of the project. Uh, some, some more we also manage the, uh, the change, changing of PI or OPI and then monitoring the expenditure and account with calculation <clears throat> uh, and last uh, we will ensure all the PI submit the final report to the funder lah after all the reconciliation uh, processes between RGMS and SAP uh, at all. Another role uh, of BPGP is doing the management, management of the grant, which we also uh, draft, drafting the research grant guideline and procedure. We prepare the research grant data for some BPJ for the management of UM. And then we we are managing, the, not really managing, we think we are the owner of the RGMS. So we try to look for the uh, improvement, for the system improve, improvement from time to time. And then we liaise with finance department pertaining to the research grant. We also conduct a workshop, uh, we conduct a workshop of briefing and sometimes uh, for the certain research grant, we invite the funder like Mofti to uh, coaching our PI one by one and so on. Uh. So, for the last few years, we also received an uh, Emerald program, uh, which is a uh, young researcher who joined PPGP. At least they have, uh, they have some idea about the research grant and how to, how to apply and so on. So at least, uh, at this age, they can, they can see where they can get the research grant and so on. And, uh, we also advise the internal and external partners or management uh, in terms of uh, research grant. <clears throat> okay, so uh, just to share for 2018 and 2019, so this is the number of our research grant application. Uh. So this data was until uh, end of June. So as 
of do we only submit a 597, 97 uh, research proposal to the funder. So this one under the award, the award section. <coughs> okay, so this is the number of applications. This one until July. In July 2021, okay, so we uh, we have submitted uh, uh, for until then we have submitted 729 uh, 29 research proposal. Uh, 330 is uh, Mohi Grant and then Mohi 21 for grant, uh, government agencies, uh, 101, uh, private 113 and International 52 total is 729. <clears throat> okay, so this is, as you can see, this is the uh, current research grant uh, financial status as of the year June. Okay, as of June, we have 2,315 active research grant, which uh, uh, 119 is the project with extension which uh, uh which the project actually should be finished but it has been extended mm -hmm. so the number of project is 819 <coughs> so uh for the active project the amount is 200 uh slightly 290 million, uh, 90 million. so uh but uh, okay, for the new project, uh, new project in 2021 is 189 project uh, with amount of uh, with amount of 40 million uh, for uh, for the uh, half year. So far, this so far this is the breakdown for active research grant. So which is. Uh, 59% is ongoing project, uh, 35 is extension, and 6% only 6% for the new project in 2021. <coughs> okay, uh, this is, okay, uh, actually this is the uh, opportunity or I, I would say this is our, our responsibility as the ICOI and PPCP also. Uh, so, uh, to increase the research grant opportunity. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so, at PPGP level, we actively searching for any research grant opportunity, local and international, and disseminate to the campus. And then we also uh, building a good rapport with, uh, rapport or networking with the funder. And we try to, to negotiate with them about the <clears throat> about the some documentation or the advice and so on lah. Uh, for the PI, <clears throat> okay, uh, uh, actually, uh, I have set for the task force under the WC office. Uh, we have discussed that the, the best person who know uh, the research run by their expert uh, is uh, PI. So, uh, we, we, we receive some input from the PI which they inform us okay this grant is open and then uh PPGP will announce to the uh to the UM. Okay. Um, uh, so this is the list of person in charge pertaining to the research grant. So I have shared the name of person in charge and their email. So we have the award team. We are officer, we we are we are officer and we are our officers and this one uh related to the research grant uh to the research grant management. <clears throat> okay, so this is uh uh related to research personnel like GRA, we have a GMA and then uh financial matters uh Financial matters or optimal matters related to the accounting or benda hari procedure is Cik Fugila and then supporting online system, Cik Aigat uh, and paid charge is uh, Puan Nohagwin. 
they are located at the office uh, along the neck tackler. Okay, so, so, okay, so that's all for me. Thank you. Is there any question? Thank you very much, Jeffrey Dows. So we would like to open this session for question and answer before we proceed to the next um, session from Research Cluster. Uh, Assalamualaikum Cik Bidaus, uh, Shazri from Research here. Assalamualaikum. Uh, 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 I want to ask about the um, the report of uh, the post awards. Okay. okay. Uh, so normally, for example, mostly they require reports for every six months or every three months and so on. So do we have, uh, does PPGP uh, have any uh, any approach or any solution to avoid any redundancies in terms of uh, report report uh, in terms of reporting and and documentation. <clears throat> okay. Uh, for the timing, uh, actually we have uh, two system for reporting like Mohi and uh, Mohi and Mohi. They have their own system for monitoring. So uh, at BPGP we we are in process to actually it is actually we have plan to to reduce the redundancy but uh, for the time being uh we need to capture uh the data for both sides lah. and we 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 keep it uh in the soft copy not in form of the system but in the soft copy proposal but we are looking into that lah. Okay. Uh, meaning that uh, the, the the documentation will be similar as what Mosti or Mohi requested, right? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Actually, very much. Uh, all right. uh, Assalamualaikum, Chief Bidawos. Hello. Uh, my name is Faiz from the Faculty of Engineering. So, so I'm a new lecturer. Uh, just now you mentioned about the uh, camera program at the PPGP. Can you elaborate more on that? Thank you. <clears throat> okay, actually Emerald program uh, is organized by ADEC. ADEC. Okay, so we are a little bit with ADEC, which uh, um, we a bit with ADEC, which is uh, actually Emerald program under ADEC, and then the young lecturer will uh, I, I I will say yeah, the young lecturer will uh, register, uh, not not really register, will, uh, their name will be give, given to uh, ADEC. And then uh, ADEC have some program which they all emerald, uh, focus on young lecturer who is joining UM. And then uh, from the last discussion, we, we asking at that if they uh, if they can um, make uh, the attachment with uh, PPGP is compulsory. Actually, Emerald is the attachment for the uh, young research, young lecturer uh, in doing uh, management. So, uh, in PPGP, they are doing the management of research grant so that they have preliminary information about research grant management, the opportunities, and so on. Lah. So, uh, actually, this program was conducted by ADEC. Maybe doctor, you can uh, refer to ADEC. Lah. Or else, okay. later on, I can share, I can share uh, with you the person in charge for ADEC. Okay, uh, thank you, Chiro, because I actually I joined the uh, Ember program last uh, session, so I cannot recall any session about the PPGP, any personnel from PPGP that actually explained about the research grant in uh, system DM. So I was uh, wondering if that is a separate session for that. Okay, thank you, Chiro, for that. I will uh, confirm that with okay. the um, Ember and that. Okay, all right, thank you. Oh, yeah, all right. Um.
you very much, Mr. Muhammad Firdaus from the PGP. So for our final session this morning, it is the introduction to research cluster. Please join me in welcoming Professor Dr. Anwar's Professor Dr. Saiful Anwar Kersani, the Acting Coordinator of Research Cluster and the Officers for the final session. Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum, Salam Zahra, Selamat Tengah Hari. Uh, so it's going to be very, very uh, brief. Uh, what is going to happen is uh, briefly, I am going to be giving a brief introduction about the uh, research cluster and, and the uh, organizational structure, and then I'll pass it to the uh, ROs, our officers, uh, to explain a bit more about the uh, specific um, two initiatives that we have undertaken to help out with research within the university. So uh, the research cluster is a bit of a complicated animal, if you will. We do a lot of tasks. Uh, and if you look later during the presentation, you'll find that, that there is a lot of interconnectivity and overlaps with functions and tasks of other units under I2P. Uh, but that is normal, although that they may appear to be overlaps, but the targets and the objectives of each unit is going to be very different. It's going to be very specific and very focused. Uh, okay, uh, but like I said, uh, research clusters are a bit complicated. There are many, many tasks that we do. A lot of them are ad hoc, but for the purpose of uh, today's discussion and today's presentation, we will only be touching into tasks uh, that will most likely affect how the research centers can benefit from interaction with the research center, research cluster. Okay, right. So, firstly, I'd like to give you a bit about the. Uh, can we go back one slide? The mission and vision for the research center. So, research, research cluster. I'm getting confused now. Uh, the mission is to foster impactful interdisciplinary research in niche and thrust areas, and clearly. This mission requires our continuous engagement and collaboration with all researchers, particularly those from the research centers, because you are supposed to be the centers of excellence where the best minds in the university come together to solve problems, real world problems, basic problems, so on and so forth. So yes, we need good interactions with the research centers. And our vision is to be a platform for UM researchers to achieve research excellence, ultimately for the betterment of society. So we're not doing this for publications. We're not doing this only for scholarly output, but our ultimate aim is to actually impact society. We are doing this for the nation. That we must remember in whatever research endeavor we undertake. Okay, next slide, please. Well, okay, thank you. Okay, a bit about the uh, structure of the uh, research cluster. So there are four research uh, clusters in all. We have the uh, Innovative Industry and Sustainability Science, or IISS for short. We have Frontiers of the Natural World, FNW. We have Health and Wellbeing, HWB. And we have Social Advancement and Happiness, SAH. And each of the research clusters are actually headed by a dean uh, under which there is a deputy dean. And from the list, you can see here that for IISS, the dean is Prof. Hasid, and his deputy dean is Prof. Nomaniza. For FNW, the dean is myself, Saiful, and the deputy dean is uh, Dr. John. For HWB, the dean is Prof. Noran, and the deputy dean is uh, uh, Dr. Siti Nadia. And for FAH, the dean is Prof. Stephanie. And the deputy dean is Dr. Ahmad Zabidi. So these are the people who are well, who, who sits within the research cluster, hoping, trying to uh, improve the way we do research, move forward, and engage with everyone in an attempt to do so. Next slide, please. We also have officers and administrative assistants under the research cluster. We have uh, Madam Valerie, who is the coordinator for the officers. We have Madam Norhidaya, Ms. Uh, Siti Kariha. Dr. Chanti and also Madam Haryana as our officers. So, in um, usually, a, if we're talking about uh, submission of grant proposals, about other activities associated with the research cluster, uh, about talks, about visibility programs, and all that, these are the five officers that you will most likely be interacting with. Yeah. 
Now, each of the five officers actually govern or are in charge of a specific um, initiative under the research cluster, which they themselves will present to you in a bit. So again, for any one of those, you can get in touch with them, but actually you can get in touch with any of them. It doesn't have to be any specific officers. We also have our three administrative assistants, Madam Suryani, uh, Encik Abdul Halim, and Madam Siti Nofairos. They are a very essential uh, group of people who ensure also the smooth running of the uh, research clusters. So these are the members of the research cluster. So as you know, it, it, uh, we're not that uh, a big unit, but we do a lot of things. And I think a lot of our work actually is uh, things that can benefit researchers directly. Next slide, please. Okay, so again, a bit more of uh, uh, introduction to the cluster. Uh, the research cluster actually pushes specific niche and thrust areas in trying to achieve its aims, uh, mission and vision. Okay, we have niche and thrust areas. Niche and niche areas are areas that has been identified where UM already has a very strong fundamental presence. We have good researchers, we have the critical mass, we have outstanding individuals who shine within these areas. And then we have the thrust areas. Now, the thrust areas are areas which, if pushed, if properly focused, can be moved forward to a similar level of uh, recognition as the niche areas. In other words, areas where we have good people, we have good potential, but needs a bit more push for it to be recognized as uh, an area in which we're really, really good at. And the identification of the niche and thrust areas was actually done somewhere in... Uh, 2019 or 2018, where we had a workshop, a proper discussion with the various faculty deans and deputy deans, identifying what areas are strong and what can be put underneath and trust areas. Um, so a bit about the niche and trust areas. The niche areas are, are divided into the different clusters for uh, SAH, niche areas, cultural heritage and civilization and behavioral sciences, for HWB, cancer and aging, for FNW, nature and spy technology, focusing on drug discovery, and for IISS, energy and materials. For thrust areas under uh, SAH is education for the future and smart society. For HWB, innovative health, mental well-being, and lifestyle diseases. For FNW, curiosity fundament, uh, driven fundamental research. And for IISS, it's IR 4.0, water environment and sustainable uh, living. Next. Next slide, please. Okay, and now a bit about the initiatives. These are initiatives intended to, to improve, to empower, and to increase the level of uh, effectiveness of our researchers. And uh, this was actually started, well, some of it was started this year. The five initiatives are the IIRG and IMPACT, Synergistic Research Partnership, External Grants, Visibility, and Researchers Empowerment. This will be presented by our officers. And our aim is to empower UM researchers in achieving research excellence, to establish good collaborative research with national and international institutions, to foster impact-oriented interdisciplinary research, uh, uh, among other things. Now, uh, I think I will pass the uh, presentation now to our uh, officers before I will take it back to talk a bit about uh, the research centers and what the expectations are. So thank you very much for me for now. Thank you very much, Prof Saiful. Can you hear me on? Yes, very okay. clearly. Uh, okay, very good morning to all. Okay, uh, I'm Chanti. Okay, uh, under a cluster uh, of health and well-being. So today I'm going to uh, present on pillar IIRG and impact. Okay, so uh, let me just brief uh, on the IIRG. The UM Impact Oriented Interdisciplinary Research Grant Program is aimed to change the research cluster within UM to more integrate disciplinary approach. So the specific objective are shown in the slide and the aim are to strengthen the niche and nature trust area to encourage interdisciplinary research and also to drive impact-oriented research. So clusters that involve are FNW, Foreign Frontier of the Nature World, 
HWB Health Wellbeing, Innovative Industry Sustainability Science, ISS, and then Social Advancement and Happiness. So the statistic of application and successful application is shown here uh, that uh, for cycle three, 18 successful application. Uh, cycle two was 32 successful application. And for cycle one is 35 successful application. So uh, for further information, please go through the guideline for IIRG cycle four before submitting uh, the application. So under this pillar, we have started one activity, namely IIRG Impact Champion. So the aim of this activity is mainly to boost the research uh, visibility and also the researcher visibility for their research to be a broader uh, audience. So uh, what we do is we started with the recipient of IIRG for cycle one, two and three under uh, HWB. Uh, further uh, more, we will be doing for other clusters as well. Uh, so next slide, please. Okay, so for the next uh, slide is on pillar impact. So uh, the definition of impact, I think um, this is a very uh, brief one where a benefit or a positive changes that take place outside the academia. So we can see there are five uh, uh, changes that we can see on the economic uh, changes. Okay, for example, uh, I, uh, Example uh, on helping some business, uh, small business to grow and so on. So you can see the changes there. And the second one is changes in health or well-being. So example given uh, like uh, helping the government to reduce the poverty or for improving quality of life for older generation uh, and so on. The next one is on the environmental changes. So example is preparing a float um, insurance for climate change. Uh, the next example can be given is on the cutting cost with a light street lighting. Uh, the next one is on the affecting uh, decision making, attitude change and uh, behavior change and also the policy changes. So as for uh, impact pillar, activities that has been taken under this pillar are first we have a discussion on the impact with uh, research centers under uh, HWB uh, and also faculties like uh, dentistry and also faculty of medicine. We also had a discussion on impact with UMCAS and uh, besides that, the Dean of uh, HWB also has given a talk on impact during the research clusters day and so on. So these are the activities that has been done uh, under our uh, research cluster. Thank you. Okay, we move on uh, to Sydney Partnership. Okay, Assalamualaikum and good uh, morning, eh? still not yet 12. Uh, so, I'm Hidayah, uh, Research Officer under Innovative Industry and Sustainability Science Research Cluster. Okay, so uh, one of the initiatives under Research Cluster is Synergistic Research Partnership. So, our objective is to catalyze impactful research collaboration with industry and stakeholders. So in this initiative, a research cluster will first identify and connect relevant researchers with industry and stakeholders. So research cluster will, actually in this uh, initiative, uh, research cluster will help to gather information about industry partner and we as well will arrange meeting and discussion and help researcher in early negotiation stage. And we also we help researchers to define the type of collaboration, whether is it research contract, consultancy, or joint uh, grant application. Second, uh, research cluster will uh, help to facilitate researcher 
to work on problem relevant to industry national agenda. So discussing with advice researchers on aligning concept papers and proposal towards industry and national needs. And to improve quality of the proposal, uh, we will conduct evaluation at research cluster level. Uh, we also will facilitate in uh, achievement of outcome and impact from the engagement. So we will advise on the agreement process. We know that uh, agreement process is quite detailed. So we will uh, facilitate to engage and connect researcher to the relevant units such as uh, UMCIC legal, uh, UM legal and IRO. And we also will help to uh, monitor and reporting project progress and outcome. Next slide, please. Okay, thank you. So uh, this one actually a uh, brief inform information of the previous engagement and collaboration under synergistic research partnership. Actually, thank you to the all researchers who have been involved in this engagement and collaboration. So in 2019, we managed to get 23 engagement with seven agreements signed and 300k plus external fund generated. In 2020, there are 24 engagement with six agreements signed and 350k plus external fund generated. In 2021, actually until July this year, so we managed to get 23 engagement with seven agreement signed and external fund generated 600k plus. So if, uh, if you can see here, it's actually the list of the uh, industry and also state for the engage for this year until July. So there are some ministry and, uh, ministries and also industries. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Hidayah. Next slide. Thank you very much, Prime Hidayah. Okay, moving on to the next uh, to the next initiative by research cluster is with regards to the external grant. Okay, first and foremost, the objective on this initiative is to provide more opportunities for successful applications in external grant. Uh, to help polish top drawer proposals or any uh, pro incoming proposals for future external grant as well as to match any proposal with external grant. So basically, um, what I'm going to share here is a brief, uh, very typical process flow of uh, the processing related to external grant. However, what we are going to highlight is how UM Research Cluster is going to play our role in assisting the researchers and relevant department under IPPP, that is PEPGP and the Associate Vice Chancellor Office to, uh, to help researcher and to match the researcher accordingly. All right, first we will start from the planning of the uh, external grant. For example, the, the incoming or potential external grant for the following year with the detailed information. So what we will do is we will target selected grants in advance and PPGP will share the available basic information on the grant to a research cluster. Then announcement will be made via UM Info, by PPGP or other resources, for example, the Associate Vice Chancellor Office or by the DVC RNI Office. After that, PPGP will brief research cluster about the external grant and at the step number four, identification of potential researcher is where research cluster will come in. We will look through the top drawer proposal and any potential researcher in UM expert. And moving on to the next session, if there is any briefing session required for the researchers with regards to the external grant, we will organize this session or it will be organized by PPGP. So if any meeting with the funder is required, we will do it. However, this is not a compulsory process. So moving on to evaluation and shortlist the application form or proposal. This one will be done by PPGP. If you were to notice, there's a note there, any boxes um, colored in green representing PPGP and those boxes colored in red will represent research cluster. All right, so after PPGP prepare the master list, then they will receive the submission of application or proposal form. So after that, if you notice in the second box, in the first, uh, sorry, in the first column, second row, in pink, sorry, in red, uh, our research cluster, we will assist the researchers and we will connect relevant researchers if necessary. So, um, we will also assist the researcher in the proposal writing and other, other necessary course of action, all right? 
So moving on, once we receive the application from the researchers, this one, uh, PPGP will receive the application from the researchers actually. So, and then once again, they will prepare the master list of the shortlisted uh, applications from what they have. And then once again, research cluster will come in to assist PPGP to finalize and shortlist the application. So this is where we will look into the shortlisted proposals and application on what to improve in order to help a PPGP to prepare the final submission to the funder. So after PPGP uh, compile the necessary application, then they will uh, finally submit the applications to the funder. So this will be the final step. So from there onwards, what research cluster will do is we will find, we will uh, periodically get the final list of applications submitted to PPG, by PPGP to funder. Then we will get the status of applications submitted, the success rate of previous years is available, if available, and any periodic yearly for the analysis of the data. So that is about it with regards to external grant on how research cluster will play our role. So I would like to call upon the next speaker to present on our next initiative under research cluster. Uh, hello, can, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Boleh, 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 ya, boleh. Okay, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon to everyone. I am Riha Ibrahim from Frontiers of the Natural World Research Cluster. So basically, besides from supporting and managing uh, research grant, especially our main uh, focus is in interdisciplinary research, research visibility is also part of research cluster effort in which with this initiative uh, strengthen uh, the inter interdisciplinary research within the aim as uh, our aim to convey the success of uh, research and researchers to wider community. Uh, from the past, uh, under researchers empowerment strategy, uh, we had organized a training and workshop uh, to help our researchers uh, to visible their work, such as upskilling training in uh, new media writing, video editing, and social media. Um, our workshop also in line with the IRG expected output. Uh, for the upcoming event, uh, we hope. Uh, to have more participation from our researchers uh, because uh, Research Cluster will be organizing a series of uh, research rock star tour and center of research uh, sharing session. For this month, on 25th of August, we have the first series of uh, research rock star tour with the theme uh, Industry Revolution 4.0. The Rockstar Tour is actually where researchers from various disciplines share their uh, expertise uh, and work uh, that can be understood by non experts. Uh, we also have uh, involvement from Faculty of Engineering as our co-organizer. Uh, other than that, on 27th of August, we have the second series of COR sharing station. So we have more exciting event coming, so please stay tuned. I think that's all from me, Prof. Okay, thank you. Next. Yeah. Assalamualaikum. Okay, finally, yeah. Thank you, Prof. Saiful. Hi, everyone. I'm Haryana. Uh, <clears throat> So, so I, I will briefly introduce you with a researcher's empowerment pillar that uh, also ha has been uh, one of our focus and initiative. As per mentioned by Prof Saiful that our activities and initiative might overlap with other units, but with a different target audience. So in uh, researcher's empowerment, we aim to improve the research capacity of UM researchers. If, uh, as you can see the left bubble here, this is actually our activities under researchers empowerment. So uh, to help the researchers uh, uh, to help to improve the research capacity of UM researchers 
so that we conduct uh, a sharing session, a uh, series of sharing session on uh, leading successful interdisciplinary research project and also to secure external grant, where, uh, whether national or international grant. In this session, we will also uh, invite the researchers uh, that can share their stories or tips in getting funding under certain grants. We also are uh, conducting a uh, thematic research networking session uh, with internal colleagues and external parties. This one, uh, we, uh, we aim to increase collab uh, collaboration across discipline and with external researchers and industries. To improve the research capacity of UM researchers, we also want to uh, conduct uh, as uh, XRGS preparatory preparatory workshop. This one uh, as a preparation workshop for the FRGS applicants or XRGS applicants. Uh, for example, to mentor and develop uh, ready to submit proposal. Uh, so we expect uh, to refine proposal that are ready to be revised and submitted when XRGS call for proposal. Uh, announce. The next one is Operation Salvage Clinic. This is uh, a session that we expect to refine proposal that can resubmit uh, to the funders. So the next one is we, under researchers empowerment, we want to assist and mentor researchers, especially early career researchers, to help them to develop a winning proposal. Uh, as uh, we know, many of the researchers is familiar in writing proposal, but the important things is how to link the proposal or their idea to the national and international agenda. In this session, we will include a smart objective and of course align with national and global needs and priorities uh, uh, such as SDGs, uh, uh, NKEA and so on. And then uh, we want to also address the issues of time. Some of the researchers claim that they don't have enough time to prepare a, a high quality proposal so that we hope that uh, this kind of uh, session uh, will help researchers to uh, uh, prepare a general proposal which is will be ready to be revised and submitted to the funders based on specific grant call uh, requirements so that <clears throat> uh, with this we, we will increase the number of uh, submission and uh, increase the chances of successful applicant. Uh, lastly, we aim to empower uh, UM researchers with the skills and expertise to develop impactful interdisciplinary research proposal. Under this one, we will uh, we conduct a session writing impactful interdisciplinary research proposal, which aim to match and link with other researchers from different faculties, different uh, discipline. We aim to develop a program based impactful interdisciplinary research proposal, training researchers to manage program based interdisciplinary research teams in terms of their activities, their milestone, uh, their understanding on what the difference between output, outcome and impact. And then last but not least is micro training session. This is uh, will be online training session. Uh, we aim to empower researchers with the opportunities to upskill themselves. Uh, for example, uh, the next uh, training will be on the pitching session. We hope so so that uh, we will uh, help researchers to communicate their research, their outcome, their output and their impact success story through our sharing session. I think that's all from me, Prof. Back to you. OK, thank you, Yana and Val, Chanti, uh, Idaya and Riha. Uh, I'll continue a bit by looking a little bit at research centers before we end. Next slide, please. Thank you. Next slide. Okay, 
So for research centers, this one, uh, Prof. Uh, Prof. Shaliza already mentioned just now, uh, just a bit of clarification, there are actually four tiers of research centers. There is the uh, high COE or high center of excellences, excellence, and this is a national, national level. We have the uh, UMPDEC, TIRAC, IUS, and PRC, for research center. We have the tier two research centers, which is the UMCOEs or potential high COEs, uh, SEBA and NOCAT. And then we have the tier three research centers, which are Senate approved UM research centers uh, under the research clusters and also faculties, and also tier four, which are research groups. So uh, for, for the most of us, it's going to be falling under tier three. So under, I mentioned just now, under research uh, cluster and also faculties, meaning that the monitoring is done either by the research center clusters or the faculties, okay? No other discernible difference. Next slide. Okay, uh, some considerations about research centers. These uh, things I'm sharing with you now can actually be found in the guidelines of establishing a research center. I'm sharing this again because I think, uh, as mentioned just now by Prof Hasid, a lot of the members uh, or the heads of the research centers at the moment, particularly, are actually second generation or third generation members and heads. In other words, they may not be aware about the considerations and requirements and the objective of establishing research centers. So some considerations which you must have in your centers are your mission, vision, and objectives. As far as the university is concerned, we want you to form research centers so that you can perform very uh, special types of works that would otherwise not be able to be carried out without a lot of people coming together doing it. In other words, if you were to do this alone, you can't do it. Otherwise, there is no point for having centers, okay? Uh, and also eventually we hope to promote or, uh, or improve everyone to the point of becoming a high COE. That's the ultimate goal. Your centers should have very clearly defined themes, what exactly you're doing. You must also be very clear how you are going to achieve visibility. We have many, many, many good centers in the university, more than seven, uh, 50, I think close to 100. But very few people know who you are and what you're doing. So again, if you do not have visibility, then you cannot possibly have impact, okay? Uh, and I think Cluster currently is carrying out uh, sharing sessions for research centers to give a platform for you to tell us about what you're doing, uh, what are your research areas, what are your expertise. And I hope when we do call upon you, uh, you will be participating in our visibility exercises. You must also have a very clear governance structure and membership for the centers. If possible, you should have some form of infrastructure, especially for those lab-based research centers. And you must have a very clear funding as uh, financial sustainability plan. How would you remain financially viable over the next 5, 10, 15 years? Okay. And of course, excellent performance and good scientific practice. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, okay, these are the requirements that you must fulfill before you are recognized as a center. So you, at one point, at least during your formation, your center will have fulfilled this, okay? But along the way, maybe there's a change of leadership, there's a change of membership, you may have lost a bit of this. So I'm just putting it here so that you can refresh and you know look at yourself again, self-evaluate whether or not you actually fulfill these basic requirements. You must have a very clear focus area that is aligned to niche and trust. That once is a bit loose, I'll leave it as having a very clear focal area that is critically important to the success and branding of UM. Okay? As centers, you must be focal points where people from different disciplines can come together and conduct impactful research for both for all academia, industry, community, so on and so forth. In other words, the quintuple helix. Okay? Uh, and you must show that as a center, you can, you have the potential to become a leader and your members are authorities within your respective niche or thrust area. It cannot be just 10 people coming together doing so-so research. 
you must show the potential of becoming a leader in your field. And again, financial independence and sustainability. And you should have collaborators outside of the university, both locally and internationally, because this is hoped to increase your visibility of the centers and also the quality of the research and research output. And with these collaborations, we also hope that you have better engagement with respective stakeholders. And finally, most importantly, centers must be collaborative efforts. Remember, yeah, centers. A one-man center is not a center. It's one man. It must be a collaborative effort. If I'm not mistaken, minimum number of membership for centers is five researchers. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Uh, and finally, the monitoring will be done either by the faculties or the research centers. And at the moment, the monitoring instrument we're using is uh, the one used for the high COE. I know it's tough, but like I said, the ultimate goal is to get everyone to become high COEs. And what better way to achieve that than to measure your performance against the high COE requirements, okay? Uh, but we will have a separate session for this to discuss how uh, the evaluation will be done, how to actually uh, fill in the form for the high COE, and what we'll be looking at within the university itself in terms of the evaluation. So other than that, I think uh, I'm done. I thank everyone, and I'm open for questions. Thank you. Any questions? Hi, Prof, Prof Saiful. Yes, hi. Hi, I'm uh, Jennifer, heading uh, Oral Cancer Research and Coordinating Centre. Hi, Jennifer. Uh, yeah. Hi, I have a question regarding uh, MOAs. Um, if, uh -huh. if our um, memorandum of agreement, if our centre were, were planning to establish an MOA with perhaps a centre overseas, now uh, does this right. come under the synergistic collaborative uh, uh, unit or just it can. Yeah. It can. Uh, I think uh, uh, the best way to go about this, I mean, it, the MOA, uh, who can help you out, it will defend, depend on what stage of the MOA will be, but eventually you will pass to the person uh, who will be in charge. Lah. But I would suggest that you contact uh, the uh, upper number two HWB research uh, cluster, and then go from there, uh, seek the advice as to uh, uh, how to move up. Yeah. Okay, uh, just a just, uh, related question. Since our center yes. is tier three, it's yeah. uh, attached with the faculty as well. Now, yeah. when we sign such a document of a MOA or a MOU, can mm -hmm. the research uh, cluster be the signatory for it or does it have to be faculty? This is where, you know, we are a bit confused. Uh, Quote. I think uh, for color MOU, MOA, I think the signatory is uh, Vice Chancellor then. Uh, correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, of yes, officers. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be the Vice Chancellor. We just Vice facilitate. Witness can, yeah. research cluster can be witness. Yeah, but the signatory is actually the Vice Chancellor himself. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. You're welcome. I see some people raising their hands, but I can't seem to check my uh, participant list. Something wrong with my system. Siapa yang raise hand? Rutun Jaya Bu Bu Han. Bu Han. Bu Han. Are you there? Tahu dia mic ke, Prof? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I dah tekan allow mic. Yes. Uh, very nice, excellent. So, con connecting to the previous questions from Jenny. So yep. uh, here my question. Um, I actually I have the query connecting to uh, the how to establish the MOA program corresponding to the another center and also uh, like uh, the graduate level, like the uh, doctoral level, PhD uh, level exchange of the students, like uh, co supervision and other. Uh, could you repeat the question? I, I, I did not quite get that. I, I 
Okay. A bit about the part so, of postgraduate supervision. Okay, so uh, to establish the MOA, uh, where we have like for the center uh, to another center, and is it possible to uh, taking the students uh, like co supervision and uh, exchange okay. the students also this kind of things? Right. Possible? Okay, MOA. I, uh, okay, MOA. Like I said, I think it's better for you to get in touch with the uh, respective cluster or, or yes. faculty, depending where your center is uh, located uh, or affiliate uh, associated under. But for the students, uh, yeah, I don't think there's an issue. But um, it depends on where the student is registered as to who will be uh, performing the administrative task. If the student is registered with your faculty, then you're gonna have to get in touch with your faculties. Um, IA degree unit. If your student is registered with IAS, then you have to get in touch with IAS for uh, appointment of a co supervisor externally. Okay? Thank okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Next, please. And Sapa tadi ada, again, like I said, I can't check my uh, list of participants. Ada dua, Prof. Uh, Encik uh -huh. Muhammad Fazil. Uh, Muhammad Hello, Prof. Fazil. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, Prof, dengar, Prof. Yeah, yeah dengar, dengar. Okay, Prof, um, I just nak tanya, macam previously, uh -huh. kita punya Center of Research ni updatekan data-data dalam UMI system. Yeah. And and uh, in our opinion, that was quite good lah juga sebab kita dapat tahu uh, all the marks and everything kan? And yeah. then all the comments. Agreed. So, what happens to that that system? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, so, I don't think sure actually what happens to that system because the monitoring is actually under, the, bukan monitoring, the data entry with regards to your performance and all that is under uh, PPP. Saya rasa Encik Cangkut yang address, yang jaga that one. Dulu memang kita pakai Umis, it was pretty good. But for whatever reason, I'm not entirely sure why, we switched to the uh, high ceiling instrument. Uh, that one, we're still discussing. Lah. We're trying to come up with the best uh, possible solution for that. But I do agree with you, Umis was actually quite easy to go through. So yeah, yeah, I, I'm sorry about that. I, I can't yeah, documentation the wise, you can stop and then we know we know yeah, how, yeah. How, many, how many points that you call again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, thanks, so, uh, but the uh, yang tu pun ada juga tau. The, the high school instrument is actually an Excel spreadsheet. You can look at your points. Tapi itulah, we'll have a separate session to discuss that lah. Yeah. All right, thanks. Bro. Okay, all right, thanks. Ada lagi? Uh, next is uh, Dr. Raja Jamilah, Prof. Yes, Dr. Raja Jamilah, go ahead. Assalamualaikum Prof. Um, Assalamualaikum. Boleh dengar? Um, boleh, saya boleh. tanya mengenai MOA tadi kan uh, apa, hmm. ataupun MOU. Da, tadi hmm. kata kena sign uh, di uh, di signature di, di tanda tangan oleh VC. But yeah. sometimes kan um, the the agreement is between uh, apa research center directors only kan. Kan kadang so have to be VC juga ya. Biasanya kalau MOU MOA memang uh, the the center tu semua ada but for UM nya part is the uh, VC lah biasanya. Val can you clarify Val? Saya tak apa-apa. Uh, Val? Because if, if the other side, the the the, the person who's going to sign is the director. Yeah. So in our side also the director lah kan? Macam tu kan? Uh, uh, maybe uh, saya boleh kerja. Yes, go ahead. Okay, ahead, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, it's uh, normally when the VC signs the agreement because it's between two different uh, universities or organization. Let's say University Malaya or other university or other company or other stakeholder. But in terms of internal, so meaning within UM, so it's not until VC. But we can ask UM legal to advise us on this. Okay, can I uh, can I add in John here for the MOA? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ahead, yeah. uh, John here. Actually, uh, you can, but we still have to turun kuasa. So the IRO office will ask for the uh, turun kuasa from VC for you to sign the agreements. Okay, so it's possible, but uh, must be getting the approval from VC. Is that answer your questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, uh, everything must go uh, through the IRO lah, right? Yeah, yeah, normally, yes, we have to yeah. vet by legal. First thing, okay. let by Vigor because VC will not put his signatures for you know any document prior mm. vetting by the legal because it's a it's considered a legal document though right especially the MOA. Okay. Must be careful read by the legal, right? And then only the uh, VC will put his signature. You are right. Directors normally will be the directors. Okay. Mm. So mm. Uh, normally what I do is we have two call two signatures. 
one between the uh, company uh, big boss, right? Okay, the CEO and so on, and uh, our VC, right? Then the weakness, weakness can be a director, okay? Oh, yeah, but you yeah. say you want only one signature, director and director can also, but yeah. the VCs need to have a touring quarter, touring quarter, but the director to sign the documents. Thank so you. we we directly send the the document to the IRO lah, right? Yes, to your faculties, Melalui your faculties. But if, if that is the center is under the faculty lah, right? If it's the the faculty, uh, some centers not under. Uh, okay, okay. Then you have to contact the uh, relevant people like if you're under Custer, then we will manage it as well. We will send okay. also send to the IO office actually. Yeah, also yeah. Also the legal, yeah. So sometimes we straight away send to legal as well. Depends on the situation. Mm -hmm. Depends. Yes. Okay, thanks. Thank you, thank okay. you. Uh, thanks, so the join and next uh, one is. Yes, Next, next one is Prof. Wan Haliza, Prof. Uh, ah, yeah, ya, Prof. Wan. Okay, terima kasih. Yeah. Uh, Assalamualaikum, uh, selamat tengah hari. Assalamualaikum. Uh, saya ada satu soalan, saya tak tahu sama ada soalan ni appropriate ke tak. Tak tahu. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> This is um, regarding the uh, financial sustainability of the center. Yeah. Okay. Right. I think. Um, Uh, at the uh, center level of uh, research cluster, there should be some some sort of like strategy uh, how to achieve this, meaning that there should be a guide for us how to achieve this uh, at the center, you know, maybe, you know, uh, a way of achieving it. Uh, I don't know. What is the university strategy? How, how can we achieve this financial sustainability for the center? Do you have any some sort of plan for us, or we have to plan ourselves? Um, I cannot respond in the politically correct way. No, just kidding. <laughs> this is uh, a big for, issue. Yes, yes, right? I know, I know, I understand. This because, is a big issue. Uh, If we solve okay, this, we solve they, many they, things. Memang, most definitely, Prof. Uh, but the thing is, um, if this is something that we've looked at, lah. Uh, at least at the uh, cluster level, we understand that there are high performing centers that if you push a little bit more, then they can do a lot better. Uh, but the problem on our side is that at the moment, we uh, do not have any additional funding to do that in that sense. The best that we can do at the moment is that if we get opportunities from outside where in our engagements, I mean, Clusters at the moment are doing a lot of engagement with uh, uh, industry. We haven't visited some of the ministries and look at what the areas of needs are at the ministry. Uh, and when we see that there is a match between our researchers or between our research centers, then we will call the research centers to come in and do the engagement. But to actually find uh, money in itself for each individual research center, I have to say that at the cluster level, we do not have that strategy right now. Okay, but it is something that is we are more than willing to entertain any discussion, any possible uh, ideas coming from the respective research centers. Uh, because memang kalau ikut the original uh, apa nama tu guidelines for the establishment of the research center. Uh, the financial sustainability actually falls on the side of the research centers. But we understand this is challenging, memang susah, without a doubt. And we are trying our best in the ways that we can help to help. Prof. Wan, Aliza. Mm. Yeah? I, okay. think, I think that yeah. is a big issue, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I know, I understand. I understand this. I know because you've, I think you've raised this uh, several times, you got good. Uh, yes. You got and all that. I and, Yeah, it seems know, there's no, yes. no, no, what we call uh, solution, yes. right? Uh, at, at the moment. Unfortunately, at the moment, with the limited funding available to the university, no. But like I said, the best we can do is that we're going out and engaging. But of course, there's not enough engagements at the moment to cover all close to 100 different research centers. Lah. But we're doing our best in that sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Can I also share? Prof. Saiful, if I can add. Um, this is Hasid. Yes, Prof. Hasid, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I, I think Prof. Juan Aliza highlighted a very, very big problem. It is really a problem. 
but but we also see that some research centers are quite innovative. So they find different ways to earn at least some money. Like they organize uh, conferences from where they can get some money. They have uh, knowledge transfer activities like training. And uh, other things like this from where they can generate some money. <coughs> Sorry, I have some <coughs> cough. And also uh, they engage with the industry uh, from there. They can get some money. Uh, Obviously, at present, it's not too much, but uh, there is an effort there from some class from some research center, which uh, are quite highly appreciated. So this could be some small step that we can start with for those centers who have not been into this. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. This is Prof. Tima. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, yes, would, like to have, I would like to ask a few questions and uh, opinion yep. uh, like our center we already apply the you know high core center i think few years ago and uh, the feedback from our application that we met all the criteria except for one criteria for sustainability that income generation okay for income generation hello do you hear me yes yes go ahead Ron. Yeah. So for the income generation, so we try hard uh, to see how we want to meet. We can be able to meet the income generation. So I think what uh, Prof has said already raised out the issue regarding about having conferences and also training. That's one of the ways to solve the problem. However, we try to do that, but we got problem in terms of processing things. So then we end up like if we got a pro uh, project for training and so on, we end, and end up going to Upum because the process is very fast and so on. So if uh, we we would like to ask whether the administration can expedite the processes, then the center can do training and conferences and all the processes for financial and everything will be very fast, then it will be possible. That I, I want to ask whether is there a way that you can expedite the processes? Because if you go to UPUM, it's very fast. They will do it like today we got their quotation and tomorrow they already come up with all those things. So how can the research center do as fast as efficient as Upum? And of course, uh, they charge 5%. So I think in that way, then we can be able to generate income because our center do not have high tech equipment just like nano center whatsoever that they can rent for, uh, you know, researcher. Then they have income generation by having their high tech equipment that people come and get their services. But I think many of the center uh, do not have that facility. So the only thing that we can do is uh, having a trainings and also conferences or workshop whatsoever. So then uh, in that case, as what Hasid mentioned, I think I agree. But I just want to know, is there a way that RMC can expedite the processes for the financial trade, all those processing? Thank you. Uh, Prof. Atima, uh, I'm not entirely clear to what kind of processes you're actually referring to. Could you clarify that? In terms of like if we are having a training, right? We want to have a training and then uh, the money want to deposit to the center. You know, there's so many protocol. So for the center, we have to go through all the processes. So is there a way that you can expedite the processes? Okay, maybe uh, uh, maybe maybe the PTGP? RMC uh, people can can uh, tell us what are the protocol now. If one center want to, use the you know all the processes. Uh, maybe the BGP can respond to this. Uh... Anyone from PPGP? I, I think at present, uh, again, this is Hasib speaking. Uh, yeah, yeah present, there, there is no uh, special uh, pathway for research centers. And I know the process is slow now, so we have to recognize that uh, as in other processes. But Prof. Fatima, I think you, you came up with this good suggestion. Perhaps we should look into that. So if some faculty uh, research center would like to generate money, 
uh, we should see if we can shorten this process and we can recommend it uh, probably. Uh, okay, so how, how can we, you know, how can we have a discussion so that we can help to improve the processes together? Because at the moment, as you know, that is very slow, right? So then uh, we want to help uh, together so that all the center can be able to benefit that. So I'm willing to help and maybe uh, can we have a discussion so that we can be able to see how we can expedite these processes? Right, yeah, we have to include, the, of course, the main stakeholders will, will be uh, bend the hurry in that. Uh, I think we, we need to organize this. Uh, this so maybe, Prof. Hasib, maybe you can uh, look into this matter? Yeah, the cluster will look into this, yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Okay, bye. But at present, please continue to engage with uh, UPUM, because we also... Yeah, at the moment now, we are going for UPUM, yeah. So we are surprised that during this COVID, we got a lot of consultation works and trainings and all those things. So we, we we kind of like, oh, Rugi, you know, because we couldn't go through the center. Otherwise, then we can declare the center income and then we can apply for our high call. Uh, but you can uh, still claim. The can can we just declare it through? Yes, and then although I, we go, is it possible I, I, that if you go to yes. Upum and then we can still declare under center? Yes. Is there yes. a way? Definitely. Huh? Yeah, I think, yeah. you, you should. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> your your voice seems very. Sorry, sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, I, I think you can. So if you have the proper uh, papers, and if there is a proof that this is basically the center is the initiator, I think that there shouldn't be any problem. Okay, so then how 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 is the process that we want to declare? Because all the project that we uh, got is through the center, and then the center go through Upum. Yeah, I, I think th for those uh, detailed administrative things, uh, cluster do not handle those. We have to talk with PPGP and also Bandahari, I think, together with uh, the research centers. So then who, who's going to, to look into this matter and, you know, uh, verify? Uh, and make, uh, perhaps we can initiate, uh, I, I think, uh, Prof. Saiful, uh, uh, we, we can initiate a discussion on this. I think this is an okay. important okay, issue. Then. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think we have to. We, I think we can look at two more questions because almost for the clock. Uh, next, please. Yeah, no, support. Next, uh, Inchit Muhammad Shazril. Yep. Uh, Assalamualaikum, Prof. Uh, Shazril here yep. from from research from engineering. Yeah, uh, I just want to point out some uh, something that some some issue that I've had with the um with the legal team. So recently we 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 started uh, we initiated uh, an MOU with Narim. And we have an issue, uh, an inconsistency issue with the UMCIC legal and UM legal. So they are, we, we, we were vetted by two different legal team and we had two different outputs or two different comments. And I think uh, Prof. Uh, Hasib and Prof. Namaniza were well aware of this. And they have rectified this issue. Uh, the thing is, uh, I, think, I think it should be, I think, uh, the research cluster need to be need to inform the legal team from the UM legal team uh, what is our our objective or what is our 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 main uh, uh, criteria. For example, uh, the first uh, vet by the UMCIC, they pass every they they, they 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 agree or they approve with all of the clusters in in the, in the MOU. But when we go to the UM legal. Uh, the UM legal is uh, suggested to remove one of the clause, and 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 uh, and they suggested they suggested to us, and we the researchers need to need to decide lah. So uh, that kind of issue, I think, uh, happened to many researchers uh, before, and can can this cluster uh, uh, rectify this problem so that uh, in the future we won't have this kind of uh, inconsistency in in the legal legal team, Prof. At the moment, uh, we can advise and uh, facilitate, uh, but unfortunately, uh, the final uh, decision with regards to the content of the MOU or MOA actually still falls under UM legal because uh, it it actually looks at the liabilities and all that. Uh, but yeah, we, we do agree that this does slow things down. That's why we also in, in, in constant communication with the UM legal. Uh. But again, like I said, with regards to these things, uh, it is on their side because they have to look at the uh, 
liability and also the uh, advantages to EM with regards to any signed document. So, uh, yes. but yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, we, we, we to, relating to that comment, Prof. Uh, yeah. For my case, I have sent uh, to the legal team the MOU from other universities uh, mm -hmm. Narim, between Narim and other IPTAs. Yeah, I, I know. Sent but them, the, the, I sent them. I the, so, the thing is, the, 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 still, the, uh, I know the legal team is the perspective. Their perspective is going yeah. to be different. So it's yes. a bit of an issue. I mean, we understand this again. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is. Uh, for everyone, actually, we're going to uh, compile together all these comments. Anything that we think we can do immediate action, we'll get in touch with the commenters again and see what we can do with that. Lah. Yeah, I think that that's the best we can do. Okay, uh, I just want to acknowledge the research cluster, lah, Prof. Asi, Dr. Bong, yeah, Pernambuza, I, yes, Hidayah, Pernambuza, and, all. Yes, <laughs> and Tony Daya as well. So thank yeah. you very much uh, to thank them. You. Thanks, thanks. And maybe thank one. Yes, thank you, Dr. Shazril. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think we, we, we have. Uh, uh, Close because we, to yeah. now. <laughs> because we struggle, yeah, yeah. we struggle yeah. since, since last year, Prof. So that's why, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. that's why we, we are quite frustrated with that, uh, with that issue. Thank you very much, yeah. Prof. Thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, hopefully, this same issue will not come up in the future. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you and, very much. And, and I think we have one final question, uh, Yana. Yes, Prof. Oh, okay. uh, from Datuk Azizan. Yes, Datuk Azizan. Yes, Datuk Azizan. Did they give out the two good quotes? Dr. Azizan, you still there? Dato, you have to unmute your mic. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Okay, Dato, yes. Just uh, wondering, because, you know, about uh, uh, as financial sustainability, uh, we... Baru-baru ni lah, I think uh, CASA is uh, trying to get something like uh, three, I think about uh, three million USD or something like that for climate change lah. But what I'm trying to say is that there are many, many uh, initiatives that I find less study is able to tap in, especially Prof Joy. So. And I also find Umbi also, they, 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 they managed to, you know, get quite a number of money from agencies. So this is something that I think we need to look at for, from UM. La. You know, how, how is our linkage with the ministry uh, in various fields? Because usually we, we, have, we are in the know what is happening. We can sort of insert ourselves and in that sense, you know, get some money uh, for our center. So this is something that I think I would like to encourage the center head. You know, make yourself known to the ministry related to your work. And, and they will then give you some ideas and also maybe give you some direction how to get some of the grants. And, and I think there's something that centers need to think about. Lah. Thank you. Thank you, Dato. Uh, fantastic opinion and idea. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, I think we are more or less uh, done. So again, thank you everyone for your participation. I hope this session has been beneficial, especially for new members and new heads. And again, like I said just now, what we'll do is we'll compile any of the questions or suggestions. And for the ones that we can take action, we will contact uh, the individual uh, researchers or centers respectively. So I pass back the uh, thing to our chairperson, uh, Madam Vell.